Welcome back to Sports This Morning on Channel Television. Guys, this is this one with speed. We started the story of the Afghan boy and um, the lobby show to Lionel Messi. And then suddenly it's looking real for him. Oh, yeah. It is real for him. Wow. Not looking real. I wow. mean, he met his idol. Obviously, he idolizes um, Lionel Messi mm. in February, all the way back when he became a, uh, oh, an, in, an internet uh, sensation. But look at that now. That's, that's the power of sports. Uh, it's uh, only, it's only football that oh, can you know, do this for a young um, so Afghan sweet. boy. Because yeah. I'm just trying to imagine when I will meet Messi. <laughs> <laughs> only the, only the days. Champion of the beats. Yeah, I know. You know, to talk about this. I mean, what do you think about all this? This young lad it's finally a, it's, gets to, to meet his idol. It, it's a wonderful thing. He won't appreciate how great it is until he's much older. Mm. I wish he was older, like a teenager or something. Mm. You know, so he's under 10 years old. So yes, he's really amazing. happy. But when he gets older, he'll appreciate a lot um, more. Uh, yeah, how great it is. And congratulations to Sports Person of the Year. LeBron James. Oh, okay. That's right. Let's go. Welcome to Headline News. A joint session of the National Assembly is being convened with lawmakers listening to the President's address on the 2017 budget. Going by recent statements from the Vice President, Professor Yemi Oshibajo, the budget is expected to be higher than 2016 budget, which is slightly above 6 trillion naira. The Managing Director of the Nigeria Ports Authority Hadiza Usman has hinted that the federal government is working towards improving Nigeria's manufacturing sector. The MPAMD was speaking earlier on our breakfast program, Sunrise Daily. She also says that her agency's priority for now is improving efficiency. A federal high court in Adoikiti has ordered the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, the EFCC, to unfreeze the accounts of Governor Ayodele Fayoshe of Ikiti, domiciled with Zenith Bank PLC. Justice Taiwo Taiwo ruled that the action of the EFCC is unconstitutional. He adds that the action breaches the governor's fundamental rights to fair hearing as the commission did not make him a party to the proceedings for the interim freezing of the account. And as part of efforts to support the federal government's anti-graft campaign, investigators, prosecutors and judges within West Africa convened a meeting in Abuja to assess judicial effectiveness. The event is a regional building seminar on economic and financial crimes. Finally, the president and other West African leaders, that is Mohamed Buhari, President Mohamed Buhari and other West African leaders, have met with President Yahya Jame of Gambia to try to persuade him to step down after 22 years in power. President Mohamed Buhari arrived in Banjul with President Ernest Koroma of Sierra Leone and President Alan Johnson Saliff of Liberia, who is the current chairperson of the Authority of Heads of State and Governments of Equus. Those were the headlines. For details of these stories and more, please go to our website, channelstv.com. Thank you so much, Ulumide, for the news headlines. Yesterday, Evo Austin was asking <laughs> me that whether Liverpool have a player that will be a contender for the Ballon d'Or. Yes. Yeah. So, you have an answer now? Uh, no, I had it yesterday, but I didn't have time. But I'm going to take your time now. You were okay. no, 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 guessing. But I was just saying, big ups on the, on the, on the players. So it's maybe you're meeting your idol, so it's okay. Thank you. Thank you, Louis. <laughs> Let's get on with oh the show now. What's that about? <laughs> when, when oh, you have the answer, the Algon boy met his idol, Lionel Messi. Yes. You know, Louis looks good and you don't know. Maybe. Yeah. <laughs> <Come on. laughs> you know, you know. <laughs> okay, guys, let's get on with the show now. We'll continue our assessment of sports in Nigeria in 2016. We started with wrestling. Danny Gali was in the studio and we tried to dissect the issues coming out of wrestling in Nigeria, our performances at the Olympics, going for world championships, and the need for development. Today, table tennis in Nigeria, we get our attention. So, guys, if you guys are ready, let's go to London. Yeah, we are the president of the Nigeria Table Tennis Federation, Enito Wide Oshodi. will be joining us later on to talk about. To the table tennis in Nigeria in 2016. But while we wait for any time to join us on the program, let's get you involved on the show this morning. You can talk to us on Twitter, our channels on the Sports Facebook, channels I feel sports. You can send us an email to sports this morning at channels tv.com. Okay. You can use the hashtag Super Falcons because we hear that the Super Falcons, they are protesting in Abuja. They, they can't take it anymore. So the girls went out there with placards and singing. They said the president must listen to them. We want our money. That's the, that's the message. It's as simple as that. Let's continue the conversation with the hashtag Super Falcons, hashtag 
table tennis in Nigeria, hashtag 2016 sports assessment. We want to assess sports in Nigeria. What did we learn from 2016? Because the year is gradually slipping away. What are the lessons so that in 2017 we can consolidate on the things we've achieved and then correct the mistakes? Very important. And I think we should show some love to the Afghan boy. What a story. What a story. He's just six years old and he has an opportunity of meeting arguably one of the best footballers this world has ever produced. Hashtag Afghan boy. Guys, what a story. While we wait for any Tom Waido show, we could just talk a little about table tennis in Nigeria. Mm -hmm. We know the progress. We know the problems. It's always funding, funding, funding. Mm -hmm. But the Nigeria Table Tennis Federation, they're staying focused. They are doing grassroots programs to make sure that we develop talent. So let's go to London. Anytime Tom Waido show is the president of Nigeria Table Tennis Federation. He joins us now live on the program. Good morning, President. Welcome to the show. Good morning. Thank you very much. Okay. Good to have you join us. Table tennis in Nigeria in 2016. What's the story? Well, it's, it's, I think it was, a good, it was a very good year for us um, overall, if you take everything into consideration. You know, it started hard, um, with the Olympic qualifiers and the team getting to the Olympics and, of course, the sensational performance of Aaron Okwa during the Olympics. Shego Toriola you know, equaling that seventh Olympic table tennis event. And, you know, coming to the, towards the end of the year, Funke Oshinaike reclaiming the African title after many years. But I think for us in the Federation, what, you know, what gives us the greatest optimism about this year was the fact that a lot of younger players have come through a lot of local tournaments, so to speak. And, you know, every time we have one of these tournaments, a new face pops up, a new young player pops up. So it's, it's, it's good that a lot more people are playing. It's good that um, we're seeing the talent there that can replace our, you know, sort of aging players. But, um, of course, like you mentioned, this takes quite a bit of money. And, you know, we're very grateful to our sponsors, people who have assisted us all through the year. And last month we had the national championships. I think it's been the biggest we've had in a long, long time. 18 events, including para table tennis that, you know, did very well in the Olympics as well, getting to a quarterfinal of their, well, one of their events. And it just tells you that with the talents we have, we should, be, we should still be, we should be doing better. But I think that needs um, a lot more money to get that coaching right, to get the right exposure for our players, like the young players who just come back. We've just come back from the World Junior Championships in South Africa. Um, good experience for them. They didn't do as well as we expected, but... Um, overall, one or two of them have shown that they have the capacity to, to become world beaters. Now, you talk about the issue of funding, and maybe that's the reason why, you know, the success you guys actually expected this year, you didn't achieve most of it. How easy will it be, or how difficult is it to actually get, you know, funding when it comes to sports in Nigeria? You know, Cecilia, it's, it's the terrain we're in right now. Everybody knows the economic situation in the country. A lot of sponsors are backing out. Of, of you know of sports of even football which is probably which is the most popular sport in the country so that tells you how difficult it's going to be i think next year will be more difficult the signs we're getting from us um major sponsors has shown that already but you know in table tennis we we we, we must continuously say thank you to the individuals that come out of the woodwork the support we get from the media which is also what helps us get onto the individuals who see the work we're doing and 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 try and put back in it's, it's going to hold us back. Funding, we, we can never have enough of what we want, even in when the economic situation was much more buoyant. And we all have to tighten our belts, go out there and look for more money because this talent, we can't just allow these young players, especially, um, not to improve. Okay, um, like you, you mentioned uh, Team Nigeria that went to the ITC of our World Juniors earlier. I mean, what do you think is responsible for their underwhelming um, performance in South Africa? Well, you know, um, let, me, let me correct that notion. It, it wasn't an underwhelming performance. You know, this was the World Championships. Um, China, Japan, we're not playing against African teams anymore, teams in the Commonwealth, the best countries in the world. And they did, you know, they did extremely well. When you put it in context that a lot of them, it was their first time leaving the country. It was their first time out. All these things have an effect on a, on a young athlete. If you're living you know, to play in a tournament when you're 16, 17. You're playing against people who've been traveling since they were eight, nine years old. They've been exposed, you know, to playing at that level for six, seven, eight years. So 
we need to get them out. You know, if you don't get out there, you won't know how good you are. And we saw it with one or two of our players. They have the, they have the ability. Um, the captain of the team, in the absence of uh, Joko Jom, Toby Falano from Quara State, fantastic player, fantastic comportment. And I have high hopes, you know, for, for these youngsters. So we're not, like you said, it wasn't underwhelming. For us, um, I thought we could still have done a bit better. But, like, you know, we, we, we have to also say thank you to the ministry. They got us tickets to travel at the last minute, but we got there in the end, and all our individual sponsors that helped. Um, there's a bright future for these youngsters, and hopefully if we can get them on the junior circuit in 2017, which I hope we can do for some of them, then I think the future of table tennis is assured in Nigeria. Mm. Okay. President, I want to stay with the future of table tennis in Nigeria. I will read, read out some names to you. And you will tell us the plans to help these players to integrate to top level. Esther Oriba Michelle has been showing promise. There's Amadi Ome, there's Sunday Akomolafe. You mentioned at Joke. We know of Vivian. Isn't it time the Federation starts looking at a transition plan? I won't stop talking about Aaron Quadri. I won't stop talking about Edem of Young. What's the future like for table tennis in Nigeria? You know, the national championship showed us that in November that, you know, the future is very bright. All these names you are mentioning, you know, Esther, I think, won a couple of titles at the national junior championship, at national championships in the junior category. I think she got a medal in the senior category. And it tells you that we're on the right track. Like I said, you know, these are the players that have gone on to South Africa. They've done fairly well. And if you don't get them out there, like I keep on saying, we won't know how good they are. Esther is somebody we've had our eye on for a long time. But like I said, every day new players keep on coming up. And the best players, we, we try and find the funding to get them the right exposure. Now, this year also, we need to be concentrating on our coaches because they're doing, you know, I have to give credit to a lot of them with the lack of facilities. And they keep on producing these young players coming through. And so we need to help them take these players on to the next level. We're doing that also, you know, Shagun Toriola is um, working with the national team with the junior players now and his experience is coming to the fore for many of them so i hope we can get like you said esther and Fallad or a few of them onto the junior circuit that is where you test yourself against the best in the world that's what made what made aruno quadri the, the player he is now and you know we're doing that there's also when you say transition don't forget there's a bridge in between that ojo no lapo mm. Um, all these players now playing in Europe, they're coming through, and hopefully they'll develop in the coming year to become, you know, top 200 players, which is probably um, where they need to be at their age. Mm. I totally agree with you. Uh, thank you so much, Wail Enito Oshodi, for speaking to us on the program. He is the president of the Nigeria Table Tennis Federation. We're assessing sports in Nigeria in 2016. He said it all, guys. Yes. Yeah. It's all so work, much work, and more work mm. yeah, for so money. Much plans. Money. Yeah. That, that's it. I mean, um, I, I, it broke my heart when he says it's going to be more difficult next year because from the feelers they're getting from the sponsors. Mm. And Table Tennis happens to be one of the federations that have actually decided to, okay, we can source for funds elsewhere and do what we want to do. That's why you have all the athletes having to win their money to qualify for the Olympics. It's a big up to them, but hopefully mm. uh, the sad news he gave, which I'm not happy with, mm. it's going to get worse next year. That's will not just happen. But I am, actually it means federations see, should brace up now. Yeah. Yeah. Today, yeah. Uh, today, there's going to be presentation of the budget so whenever they are having budget right now since we know there's economic <laughs> downtown when it comes to sponsorship companies are folding up those are helping they can actually think of how they can increase the subvention they give to sports because if you're fighting poverty taking kids off the street want the youth to be gainfully employed sport is the biggest way you can do that so let's go to super Falcons right now uh, our fillers we're hearing from abuja <laughs> pictures we had saved on twitter and of course uh, some of our correspondents in abuja the ones that sent to us this morning we can see if we can get some of the pictures across if we can we'll do that tomorrow but what we're getting right now is the fact that the Falcons are in front of national assembly protesting the non-payment of the allowances and it's really interesting to note that one of the girls you know who came back to the team talking about Faith Ikide today she's supposed to be celebrating her wedding anniversary <laughs> but she's not doing that uh, she's no. actually carrying placard in Abuja you know uh, protesting no payment yeah, of bonuses okay. and salaries it's not okay good. all right that's not the good. story it's not sweet but no. let's move on with the show that we'll go sweet. on a quick break take a breather when we come back there's still so much to talk about don't go anywhere stay